but not for good reason. Yeah, I think there are lots of good reasons for Mark Zuckerberg to be on the hot seat. I think as a conservative, the discrimination against conservative news outlets has been egregious over the past several months, and that's why you've seen traffic, dry, uh, traffic decline for every conservative website, you know, like all of them. Okay, but the reason that he's really getting flack is because the left has decided that Mark Zuckerberg is responsible for Hillary losing. So let's count all the people responsible for Hillary losing. According to the media, it's not Trump, right? Trump didn't win the election, he lost. The people responsible for Hillary losing are, in order, James Comey, the Russians, the conservative media, and social media, right? And so they finally got into the last on their list, social media, and they're trying to encourage everybody on social media to change the nature of their algorithms in order to prevent conservatives from disseminating information. So CNN is hot and bothered about Facebook having allowed companies to gather information from Facebook, okay? Which, as I've said, everyone does on Facebook. If you join Farmville on Facebook, you are go if you play Farmville, you are having your information drawn from Facebook. Every time you click on anything on the internet, somebody is gathering that information in order to drive an ad program to you. This is how people make money on the internet. Okay, but CNN grills Zuckerberg and they ask, can people trust Facebook? The answer is, of course people can't trust Facebook. They never could trust Facebook. And if you thought that, that Facebook was your friend and that Facebook wasn't attempting to market to you, how do you think they made their money? It's ridiculous. Facebook has asked us to share our data, to share our lives on this platform and has wanted us to be transparent. And people don't feel like they've received that same amount of transparency. They're wondering what's happening to their data. Can they trust Facebook? Yeah. So one of the most important things that I think we need to do here is make sure that we tell everyone whose data was affected by one of these rogue apps. Right. And, and we're going to do that. Uh, we're we're going to build a, a tool. Uh, where anyone can go and, and see if, if their data was a part of this. But so the 50 million people that were impacted, they will be able to tell if they were impacted by this. Uh, yeah, we're, and we're going to be even conservative on that. So, you know, we, we may not have all the data in our system today. So anyone whose data might have been affected this by this. This is such nonsense. Uh, I mean, OK, want to know whose data was affected? Everyone's. OK, on Facebook, because everyone is gathering information for it from you all the time on Facebook. It's how Facebook makes their money. OK, that's this is just silly talk. It's silly talk. And Zuckerberg pretending, oh, we'll be fully transparent. Oh, we'll finally reveal everything that we know. Oh, we're finally going to show you the inside workings of our... None of this is going to happen. None of this is going to happen. Zuckerberg's pandering, by the way, is really egregious. I mean, he even says that he would love to see regulations on Facebook. Okay, this is just nonsense. Here's Zuckerberg saying that he's not even sure that they shouldn't be regulated. Given the stakes here, why shouldn't Facebook be regulated? Um, I, I actually am not sure we shouldn't be regulated. Um... Yeah, of course, he you know, sure shouldn't be regulated. Why do you think he's attempting to self-regulate right now? He doesn't want to be regulated because he's afraid it will cut into his bottom line. So what's he doing? He's doing what Democrats want so they don't regulate him. Okay, this is outside Democratic pressure in order to ensure that social media companies do what Democrats want. Okay, in a second, I'm going to give you the update on what Zuckerberg posted because he posted this long, ridiculous letter uh, about, about what's been going on with the Cambridge Analytica situation. I'm going to read it to you in just a second and analyze it. But first, Mark Zuckerberg issues a letter yesterday about the Cambridge Analytica situation. And here's what he says, quote, I want to share an update on the Cambridge Analytica situation, including the steps we've already taken and our next steps to address this important issue. We have a responsibility to protect your data. And then he gives a timeline of events. He says, in 2007, we launched the Facebook platform with the vision that more apps should be social. Your calendar should be able to show your friends' birthdays, your maps should show where your friends live, and your address book should show their pictures. To do this, we enabled people to log into apps and share who their friends were and some information about them. In 2013, a Cambridge University researcher named Alexander Kogan created a personality quiz app. It was installed by about 300,000 people who shared their data as well as some of their friends' data. Given the way our platform worked at the time, this meant Kogan was able to access tens of millions of their friends' data. In 2014, to prevent abusive apps, we announced that we were changing the entire platform to dramatically limit the data apps could access. Most importantly, apps like Kogan's could no longer ask for data about a person's friends unless their friends had also authorized the app. Okay, so here's what I want to point out here. Okay, what happened in this timeline? He goes from 2007 to 2014. He just skips over everything else. What, hmm, what happened between 2008 and 2012? We're like, there's some things that happened. Like, I seem to remember in 2012, for example, the Obama administration using exactly the same strategy in order to gather data on people. I mean, they just skipped right over that. It's just Cambridge Analytica that's, that's doing terrible, terrible things. Listen, so I think Cambridge Analytica may have been a little shady. Sure. Do I think they did anything dramatically different, as far as I'm aware, than, than the stuff that Obama was doing? Am I supposed to be angry that people gather data on Facebook? This is all nonsense. It's all nonsense. I mean, this is, this is all crazy. He says, in the next month, we'll show everyone a tool at the top of your news feed with the apps you've used and an easy way to revoke those apps' permission to your data. We already have a tool to do this in your privacy settings. Now we will put this tool at the top of your news feed to make sure everyone sees it. So I'm glad they've used the news feed to get rid of all the people you actually follow. And now they're going to insert a bunch of crap that they want you to know about, but they're not going to allow you to pick the people you choose to follow. 
Okay, Facebook uh, is is increasingly a, a disastrous medium, and and Zuckerberg seems to have lost control of his own pet project, which is uh, an amazing it's an amazing thing. I mean, there's a reason that the stock and, is dropping. World travelers, you know, crossing the country. It's also been the folks over at Facebook. So right now, the Federal Trade Commission is investigating whether the use of personal data from 50 million Facebook users by Cambridge Analytica violated a consent decree that the tech company signed with the agency in 2011, according to Bloomberg. So if you recall, all the way back to yesterday's show, there was a report in the UK Guardian suggesting that the folks at Cambridge Analytica, which was the data analysis firm, the data gathering firm for the Trump campaign, that they had illicitly gathered 50 million Facebook users. Now, there's nothing illegal about what they did, apparently. What they did is they gathered a bunch of data from Facebook users who had taken a personality quiz, and then they'd use those personality quizzes. They obtained that data. They'd, they'd cross-referenced that personality quiz data with supposed politics. And this was a work of heart-rending genius, right? This is what won Trump the election. It didn't win Trump the election, by the way. Trump won the election because Hillary was an unbelievably crappy candidate and Trump campaigned in the right places. Okay, It wasn't because there are a bunch of people at Cambridge Analytica hacking your Facebook data or anything like this. This is just nonsense. If you've played Farmville on Facebook, they're gathering your information. If you shop online, they're gathering your information. You ever wonder how it is that the ads on your Google are tailored to you? Right? You just bought something from Amazon and voila, there's another ad from Amazon. That's because everybody online is always gathering information about you to make sure that they can sell you things. That's how online works. Hey, there's nothing terrible that happened so far as I can see yet. Maybe there will be new evidence of something quite terrible. But the left is going crazy because, again, they're trying to set up a particular narrative here. So a spokesman for the FTC is saying, quote, we are aware of the issues that have been raised but cannot comment on whether we are investigating. We take any allegations of violations of our consent decrees very seriously, as we did in 2012 in a privacy case involving Google. Facebook said Tuesday it had received a letter from the FTC with questions but had not been informed of a formal probe. If these were all found to be violations, if it turns out that Facebook had been willfully violating its own consent decree, it would cost them $40,000 per violation. If you were talking about tens of millions of violations, then you are talking about presumably billions and billions of dollars in violations. It would basically bankrupt the company if this ended up being a serious issue. But it really isn't. Okay, These weekend reports allege that Facebook users allegedly willingly provided their data to a psychology quiz app and then the people who made that quiz app passed the data along to Cambridge Analytica without the user's knowledge, constituting a potential violation. Okay, whatever. That is not a big deal. It re like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to pretend that I think that it's a huge deal if firms that are gathering data on you market that data to other firms. Okay, this is how online works again. People who are ignorant about how online works, the reason that you are, you are seeing all those ads is because people put cookies on your browser. Okay, this, is, this is all ridiculous. Okay, shares of Facebook fell 5% Tuesday after skidding as much as 8% on Monday. And now, apparently, Mark Zuckerberg's having a meeting, but he's not going. So Facebook's bureau, their, their staff is having a meeting. The chief executive of Facebook, according to The Guardian, Mark Zuckerberg, has remained silent over the more than 48 hours since the observer revealed the harvesting of 50 million users' personal data, even as his company is buffeted by mounting calls for investigation and regulation, falling stock prices, and a social media campaign to delete Facebook. Facebook shares slid 7% on Monday following the news, knocking $36 billion off the company's valuation as investors worried about the consequences of the revelations, according to the UK Guardian. Zuckerberg owns 16% of the company, and he personally saw his fortune fall $5.5 billion to $69 billion. Oh, poor baby. Okay, the embattled social media company announced on Monday it would engage in a digital forensics firm to, con to conduct an audit of Cambridge Analytica to determine whether the firm or not still has copies of the data in question. Okay, does this sound like anything awful happened? Well, let you, we'll let you be the judge. Okay, Here, Here's the deal. Okay, for years, all we heard after 2012 is that one of the reasons that Mitt Romney lost is because the data operation for the GOP sucked. I was there. I remember. This was the talking point. The talking point is that Mitt Romney did not have the necessary data operation in order to ensure that everything was going to go okay. Okay, and then, and, and Barack Obama's data team, by the way, was praised as these wonderful world-breaking geniuses. In fact, flashback to 2012, Maxine Waters, the, another world-breaking genius, she was talking back in 2012 about how Barack Obama had done it, and she said he gathered data on everyone via Facebook. Wow. Put in place an organization that contains the kind of database mm -hmm. that no one has ever seen before in life. That's going to be very, very powerful. And whoever... In terms of the Organizing for America that he's now shifting to become a 501c4. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that database will have information about everything on every individual in mm -hmm. ways that it's never been done before. And whoever runs for president on the Democratic ticket have to deal with that. And yet no one found that creepy. How magical. It's amazing. It's like when Democrats were engaging in micro-targeting and giant swaths of data gathering, everybody just looked the other way. Wow. 
I can't believe it. In fact, one of the publications that looked the other way, not only looked the other way, but praised the Obama campaign, was, you guessed it, the UK Guardian. In 2012, they reported that President Obama's re-election team was, quote, building a vast digital data operation that for the first time combines a unified database on millions of Americans with the power of Facebook to target individual voters to a degree never achieved before. What? I mean, that sounds exactly like what Trump's team was doing. Oh, my goodness. That must have been nefarious then. But no, it was about, about the Guardian talking about the world-breaking genius of the Obama team. Again, building a vast digital data operation that for the first time combines a unified database on millions of Americans with the power of Facebook to target individual voters to a degree never before achieved. According to The Guardian, Obama's new database would be gathered by individual volunteers who'd log on to Obama's re-election site using their Facebook credentials, consciously or otherwise. Okay, again, the entire claim here is that the Trump campaign gathered data on people who weren't consciously aware that their data was being gathered. Here's The Guardian in 2012, quote, Consciously or otherwise, the individual volunteer will be injecting all the information they store publicly on their Facebook page, home location, date of birth, interests, and crucially, network of friends, directly into the central Obama database. Facebook had no problem with any of this, but they do now. There's a reason for this. Okay, the former Obama director of integration and media analytics said, during the 2012 campaign, Facebook allowed the Obama team to, quote, suck out the whole social graph. Facebook, quote, was surprised we were able to suck out the whole social graph, but they didn't stop us once they realized that, what, that, what we were, that was what we were doing. And then this, this woman added, quote, they came to the office in the days following the election recruiting and were very candid and were very candid. They allowed us to do things they wouldn't have allowed someone else to do because they were on our side. Not so with Trump. Of course, as soon as Facebook realized that Cambridge Analytica had pursued a similar strategy, they suspended the firm. None of this is surprising because it's all part of a larger and greater agenda. That larger, larger and greater agenda, as I suggested yesterday, is that Democrats think that Trump should not have won. In order to prevent future Trumps from winning, they're going to prevent conservatives from getting out their message. They're going to prevent data mining by Republicans, but they will allow it for Democrats. They're going to prevent conservative websites like the Daily Wire from distributing our material. They'll build algorithms to prevent that distribution. They'll simulate that they will at the same time benefit a bunch of left-wing organizations that are doing exactly the same kind of journalism that we are just on the other side. Democrats have been using the Trump election as a way to browbeat social media companies that were supposed to be open sources into censoring conservatives. That's what this is all about. That's the agenda here. The agenda here, and it's been clear for months, the agenda here is the Democrats who have been claiming with no evidence whatsoever that it was social media manipulation that won Trump the election, and therefore Facebook, YouTube, Google, Twitter, these all have to be regulated. These all have to be brought to heel. This is specifically designed to cause the heads of those firms, who, by the way, are all horrified that Trump won, right? Zuckerberg is horrified, and Jack Dorsey at Twitter is horrified. The heads of Google, Eric Schultz, who was part of the Obama team, all the people at Google were horrified, right? Nobody at, at any of these companies wanted Trump to win, and they don't want any part of being blamed for Trump winning. So they are using this as an impetus to basically censor conservatives. This is the next step. So a year and a half ago, there was a lot of talk about Facebook algorithms preventing conservative topics from trending. And Zuckerberg met with a bunch of conservatives, including my friend Glenn Beck, and he went with, I believe, Tucker Carlson, a bunch of people, to talk about shifting his algorithm. And according to Wired, that was all an attempt to sort of buy off the press, prevent conservatives from whining about it too much. Well, now they don't care whether conservatives whine about it. They've just decided they're going to cater to Democrats by essentially shutting down all these mechanisms for conservatives. Senate Democrats have trotted out a bunch of pathetic Russian-created memes on Facebook viewed by a handful of human beings, right, and, and as an excuse for Hillary Clinton's loss. They've suggested that this is why Hillary Clinton lost. Those things, we showed them on the show. They're pathetic. They were seen by five people. They spent, the Russians in the entire election cycle on Facebook spent something like $100,000 on Facebook. Now, honest to goodness, small companies spend tens of thousands of dollars a month marketing on Facebook. That was a giant nothing burger. But the Democrats are claiming it's a something burger because, of course, they want to use that as an excuse to club all of these social media companies into submission. They also claimed without evidence that fake news had swamped Facebook. We've heard nothing about nothing but fake news for two years now. Oh, Trump only won because of fake news, because people were reading headlines that weren't real. We've had article after article about this, the problem of fake news. What the Democrats mean by fake news is news that is slanted to the right, right? Commentary that is slanted to the right, interpreted to the